11 of the craziest, unbelievable people and events in history. Number two will make you say, no way, but they're all true. Number 11, Taiping Rebellion. This massive rebellion, or civil war, was started in a pretty unbelievable way, and it cost a lot of lives. What happened was, this guy named Hong Xuchuan decided that he was the brother of Jesus Christ. You know, like, the Jesus Christ. And he started problems for mostly religious reasons, obviously. The rebellion was fought between 1850 and 1864, and estimates put the number of fatalities between 20 and 70 million, with as many as 100 million possible. Xutron's goals were political, nationalist, and religious, as mentioned, and he wanted to convert the Chinese people to the Taiping version of Christianity. The rebellion ended up turning into total war, was the 19th century's largest conflict, and was one of the bloodiest wars the world has ever seen. All because some guy thought he was the brother of Christ. Number 10, Ernest Hemingway. This incredible writer was once in Africa with his wife, Mary, when their plane went down while they were sightseeing. Both Mary and Ernest survived the crash, slept in the wilderness, and were picked up by a boat the next day. They then boarded another plane to get the heck out of there, and on takeoff, the second plane crashed too. Ernest had to bash a stuck door open with his head, which gave him a concussion, just to survive the flames that had engulfed the plane. But that's not it. He was in the First World War and managed to survive a time he was hit with 237 pieces of shrapnel. He once shot himself in both legs while trying to take out a shark during a fishing trip. He even patrolled the waters around Cuba in his boat, armed with a machine gun and grenades to make sure no German soldiers were trying to pull any funny business. Hemingway was one cool cat, a tough cat, a man with an unbelievable life story worthy of remembrance. Number nine, John Tyler. Think about this, John Tyler, the 10th United States president, was born in 1790 passed away in 1862, and served as president between 1841 and 1845. Here's the kicker. He still has two living grandchildren today, in 2019. Wild, but true. Two grandsons, even. First, there's Lion Gardener Tyler Jr., who was born way back in 1924 and is now 95 years old. And second, Harrison Ruffin Tyler, who was born in 1928 and is 91 years old. Harrison explained how such a thing could be possible, how three generations can span an insane 229 years. He told about how his and Lyon's father, Lyon Gardner Tyler Sr., was 75 when he was born, and how John Tyler had been 63 when he had Harrison's father. So, ancient men having babies. That's how this happened. Number eight, Hannibal. This excellent military commander made some bold moves in his time. There is one play he made that stands out among the rest and makes you wonder if Hannibal wasn't a bit off his rocker. In 218, Hannibal attacked Saguntum in Hispania, causing the Second Punic War. He then decided to take the war to Italy. And here's the crazy part. The trek to Italy was a treacherous, terrifying journey through the Alps. And get this, Hannibal had 8,000 cavalry, 38,000 infantry, and 38 horses with him on the perilous trip. He fought through any resistance thrown at him and came out on top, pulling off what some would deem impossible. You know, except for the fact that Hannibal did it. Unbelievable. Number seven, spectators at Bull Run. If you're unfamiliar with the first battle of Bull Run or the first battle of Manassas, just know that it was the first full-blown battle of the Civil War. It took place on July 21st, 1861 in Virginia, not far north of the city of Manassas. And around 18,000 Union soldiers and 18,000 Confederate soldiers faced off during the battle. By the end, 868 soldiers lie bereft of life on the battlefield, and 2,593 were wounded. The Union found themselves in trouble from the start, which the Confederates took advantage of, and they ended up tallying the first major win in the war. 
Now, while all of this was going on, there were lots of civilians wandering around near the battlefield, many with picnic baskets, looking to watch the day's exciting events. Most of them stayed around five miles away, but there were plenty who ended up in the thick of it. One, a Congressman Eli, was captured and taken prisoner by the 8th South Carolina Infantry. Who are these people? Number six, Wilmer McLean. Okay, so this guy had some truly weird luck. He was a wholesale grocer who lived in Manassas, Virginia at the wrong time, as his farm is where the first battle at Bull Run was fought. He became a sugar broker who sold to the Confederate Army, but his work was hard as he did it in the southern part of Virginia and lived in the north, which was swarming with Union soldiers. He decided the best thing for the family would be to move to get away from the war, and they did, to Appomattox County, Virginia, some 120 miles south. Almost four years later, the war found old McLean again. On April 9, 1865, General Robert E. Lee was about to surrender to General Ulysses S. Grant, and someone knocked on McLean's door. It was a messenger, letting McLean know that McLean's house would be used for the surrender. So, the Civil War basically started on his property in Manassas, Virginia, and it ended in his home in Appomattox County, Virginia. Life comes at you fast, huh? One day, you're watching the opening shots of the Civil War. The next, you're hosting the surrender meeting in your living room. Unbelievable. Number five, the storm that saved America. All right, so American forces attacked British government buildings in Canada back in the War of 1812, and to get back at the United States, the Brits decided they'd burn down Washington, D.C. They did it in 1814, and first encountered volunteer soldiers, who hadn't been in battle before, and they unsurprisingly overcame them quite easily. Obviously, all the really important people had been evacuated to safety by this time, and the British forces set fire to the White House, the Capitol, and various other government buildings. Then, the next morning, Rain poured and poured for two hours on the burning city, and winds picked up into what many say was a tornado. Witnesses said roofs were blown off houses, cannons were picked up as if they weighed nothing, and trees were torn from the ground. The rain put out the fires, and the confusion of the storm helped the Americans push the British out of D.C. So a freak accident changed the course of American history. A miracle? Number four, Operation Mincemeat. If you think that there are limits on how far people will go to deceive others, you are wrong. There seems to be no limit. During the Second World War, the British decided they wanted to disguise the Allied invasion of Sicily and use the body of a homeless man to achieve their goal. They found a man who had recently passed due to eating rat poison, a man named Glyndor Michael. They then slapped him into a Royal Marines officer uniform planted fake identifying documents on him, as well as papers suggesting Sicily was just a distraction for the bigger invasions of Sardinia and Greece. They even threw a picture of his girlfriend on him for good measure. The body did what it was intended to do and threw off the Germans, convincing them that Sardinia and Greece were the real targets. Reinforcements were sent to both places, and when it was actually Sicily that was targeted, the city received none. It had been predicted that the campaign would take 90 days. It ended up taking 38. 10,000 casualties were also expected, but only around a seventh of that number really fell. And instead of the 300 ships the British counted on losing, they lost 12. So a deceased homeless man ended up changing the fate of the war in the Mediterranean. Funny how that worked out. Number three, Tycho Brahe. This man was brilliant but he sure did have to leave this world quite painfully. Tycho Brahe was a Danish astronomer, writer, and nobleman who was born at Nutztorp Castle and as an heir to a few of the noblest Danish families. He had a twin brother that died before he could be baptized, was taken to be raised by his aunt and uncle at two, and even lost part of his nose during a sword duel with another man. They were arguing over who was the better mathematician. He had many interests, including mathematics, astronomy, alchemy, astrology, and he's known for his very accurate astronomical observations. Now, how did he die? In 1601, Brahe attended a banquet, 
and not long after developed a kidney or bladder problem. Johannes Kepler, the famed astronomer and Brahe's assistant, said the Brahe wouldn't leave the banquet to urinate, as it would be a breach of etiquette, and by the time he got home, he couldn't go at all. He died painfully, and a physician said it was because of a kidney stone, although no kidney stones were found post-mortem. A ruptured bladder was the culprit. Let that be a lesson. If you have to go, then go. Number two, Christmas truce of 1914. In 1914, in the midst of the First World War, unofficial ceasefires took place all along the front lines so that the soldiers could enjoy a nice Christmas. That's right, they stopped the war in the holiday spirit. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this was not long after the race to the sea and the first battle of Ypres, and both sides were trying to figure out their next move. So it was a bit of a lull period, which made for the perfect setting for a Christmas celebration. Plus, it was only five months into the 51-month war. Soldiers would up and leave their trenches and visit those of the enemies, and at times, they even exchanged gifts. They held joint burial ceremonies, went caroling, swapped prisoners, and played soccer games. Then they just picked up where they left off and began to fight again. Truces like it were attempted on future occasions during the war, but none went so well as the Christmas truce of 1914. One more incredible story to go, but first, hit up the comments section. What's the most unbelievable true story you've ever heard? Personally, I gotta go with stopping World War I to host a Christmas party on the battlefield. Number one. Abraham Lincoln's Secret Service. Did you know that early on the day that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, he signed legislation that officially started the United States Secret Service? You know, the guys that now accompany the president everywhere and are tasked with keeping him safe? Well, they weren't initially meant to be important people protectors. They started out as a division of the Department of the Treasury tasked with finding and pulling counterfeit currency from circulation. In fact, it wasn't until 1901 when President McKinley was assassinated that Congress decided to ask the Secret Service to protect future presidents. In 1902, they took over full-time responsibility for the life of the President of the United States. And they've been doing so ever since. How ironic that the group who protects the most powerful person in the United States was created the same day one of America's greatest presidents was assassinated. Guess the world works in mysterious ways.